Hey, welcome everybody to Let's Go Fresco. This is the uh, every other week show where we talk about fresco. Well, it's in the title, so that shouldn't surprise any of you. Today we're talking about one of those features that come along um, that just really blow your socks off. And this one I use all the time. Uh, I use it in so many illustrations for so many different reasons. So I want to share it with you today and talk about and celebrate uh, the many things that it can do. It's called the multicolor eyedropper. It allows you to create multiple colors uh, in a single swatch so that you can use those on any brush including the live brushes, oils, and watercolors, all the pixel brushes. And there's more you can do with it than simply selecting multiple colors. You can literally select anything from your canvas and turn that into a brush. We're going to investigate how that all works. It's very simple, very easy to do, and I think it's going to give you a lot of things to play with with your own brilliant creative minds. So let's say hi to some folks who are joining us right now. I see Barbie is here. Hey Barbie, how you doing? And Cody. Hi Annika, you love the multicolor eyedropper? I do as well. It's awesome. Hi Kathleen and hello Laura. Hi Sean, nice to see you. Ryan is here, the great Ryan Selvi. Thanks for joining us, Ryan. Uh, and of course, Cody and Bruce and others who are filtering in as we speak. Um, Z is here as well. What's up, Z? If you all are watching on YouTube or Twitter or elsewhere, remember that I am going to be following the cha uh, chat over at uh, behance.net slash Adobe Live, or BE, as in to be or not to be, dot net slash Adobe Live. So head on over there if you want to ask me any questions about Fresco or about my amazing hairstyle. Up to you. Let's get started. So um, we are going to go here to my iPad. I'm working on my iPad. Now, Fresco is supported on iPad, iPhone, and multiple Windows devices. Um, and I want to point out, as I always do on the top of every show, that uh, Fresco is free, okay? No strings attached. Free app, download it, start painting and drawing. You get all of the features in Fresco, all the tools in Fresco uh, with the free version. You get to export your work um, wherever you like and save it. High-res files, 8K by 8K um, on the maximum size. And um, as, of course, the hardware continues to improve on Apple's side and Microsoft and elsewhere, we will continue to increase that file size. So if, um, you know, 24 inches by 24 inches, or I think it's 28 inches even, if you were to do the math at 300 DPI is not big enough for what you want, then, um, you know, you can always up it, but that's a pretty big file. Barbie says, Fresco is so fresh. Ha <laughs> ha, good play on words there. I like it, I like it, I like it. Cody says, I keep forgetting to try out the multicolor eye drop. Well, today is the day. So go ahead and open Fresco and follow along with me. Let's get cracking. Now, um, I'm going to make a new layer here, uh, and we're going to just select any old pixel brush. And to start with, I'm going to come into the painting category here, and I'm going to grab, let's see, so many options, something simple like the natural brush. All right, there it is. I'm going to reset that brush right here. I'm going to turn on my touches. You'll be able to follow along with everything that I'm doing here in Fresco. And normally I don't have the touches turned on when I'm trying to draw and paint, but for today, I think it's important for you all to see uh, what I'm doing. So you'll be able to follow this little blue circle everywhere it goes. That's me. That's me. You can follow along. All right. So here we are in our brushes category, natural brush selected, and let's make ourselves a multicolor swatch. We're just going to dive right into it. I'll select any old color here. Nice little red right there. Uh, just throw that down and we'll grab another color. Why don't we just use our basic, you know, primaries that everybody knows and loves so well. Okay. Cyan, magenta, yellow, all right, there we go. Now, normally if I touch anywhere on the screen with my finger, that is going to call up my eyedropper tool. See that, I can move it around. I can also come over here to the eyedropper tool in the toolbar, and I can move that anywhere I like and be really specific about what color I wanna select, okay? And then I can just come and I can paint with that color. All right, we know how that works. But multicolor eyedropper allows you to select all those colors at once. This 
little handy dandy thing is called our touch modifier. I'm just using my thumb to drag it around on the screen, okay? You can place it wherever you like. I am a left-handed artiste, so I like to have it in the bottom right corner of my iPad so I can use my thumb to touch at any moment and draw. So there it is, I can touch like this. All right, I can double tap, I can triple tap. It has different kinds of modes. But for the eyedropper, all you have to do is hold down that touch modifier and then with any other finger, okay, just come anywhere on the canvas, all right, and you're selecting multiple colors. If you look at the top right over here, it says multiple colors. It's telling me I'm doing that. So I'm gonna select all three of these colors at once, okay? Then I let go of my touch modifier. Now, if you look over here at the color swatch that I've selected, you will see a tiny little preview window of all three of those colors directly from the canvas. It's as simple as that. I have now selected a multicolor eyedropper selection. So now I'm painting with these multiple colors at once. Now you're asking, well, why am I not seeing the red? Okay, well, because of the properties of this particular brush and the way it responds, to tilt and everything else, it's only capturing two of those colors. You'll see a little hint of the red every now and then. If I grab another brush that does not have the same properties, for example, the Ruffin brush, and start to paint with that, look what you get. All three colors in one. That is all it takes to create a multicolor eyedropper, eye, uh, a swatch for you, multicolor swatch from the multicolor eyedropper. Now, those of you who don't like the touch modifier, and I don't know who you are out there, but if you don't, uh, first of all, I'm afraid we can't be friends anymore. Just kidding. But if you really, really don't like having it on screen or if it gets in the way for some reason, um, you know, you could always move it. But if for some reason that's just something you don't use, you're not in the habit of using it, you don't like it, you don't need it, folks, because you can come over to your eyedropper tool right here. And right down here, you have options for it, okay? Right here was a little solid color, okay? And under the blue dot right now is our multicolor. So if you just change the mode, okay to multicolor now you're using a multicolor eyedropper as well see so i can come over here and select this little section right there and start painting with that and i've got myself another multicolor swatch now these multicolor swatches just like any of your other colors in your document show up right here in your recent color history see that there's number one okay number two they're right there um, and so if you're making multiple multicolor swatches, say that three times fast, um, you're going to be able to save and remember them. There is a limit currently for how many it will remember, and I believe that limit is set to six. Um, but we are already looking at ways to increase the number of multicolor swatches you can remember in your color history because it's such a commonly requested feature. I too would like to see that number double. I'd like to see at least 12 multicolor swatches get remembered at all times in my document. So um, we are working on that as well, don't you worry. Uh, so let's get into now what can be done with a multicolor swatch, all right? We'll clear this away for a minute. And we're gonna look at a few practical applications and things that you can do. Number one, the first thing is you can paint with multiple colors. Now you might be thinking, well, I don't wanna do that. Uh, why is that useful? Hold on a second. Let's imagine that you have something that you want to paint that has stripes, okay? A striped pattern of some kind. So I'll go ahead and I'll grab another simple brush. Um, just use this natural brush one here. And let's say that we have a stripey pattern that we want to use in our artwork. Okay, we're going to do this and this. And it's going to be a green and yellow and a little blue pattern okay there we go now i'll just set that off to the side for a minute okay oops i didn't mean to do that sorry off you go and uh, i'm going to create another layer and i'll just use a darker color here and i will grab this uh belgian comics Inker, there we go. And we're gonna have this person. And like I said, it's hard for me to draw with the, the touches, so don't judge my drawing. But let's just have this person here. Standing. with their hands in their pockets. It's gonna be like a 
oversized blazer. We're talking like 1980s kind of new wave kind of situation here. Okay. Okay. Now, we're going to add some stripes to these pants right here. Okay. So, all I have to do, grab a simple brush. Look at this. We go to basic. And let's go ahead and use the hard round variable brush. I'll reset it at the bottom here so that it's a little larger. And this is what it looks like when I paint with it, okay? So make it a little smaller. And here is one of the key things about this multicolor eyedropper. You can select as much or as little of your canvas as you want simply by zooming, okay? So check it out. If I come all the way like this, hold down my touch modifier and tap right here, I'm selecting exactly this much of the canvas. I can see the preview in the circle of what I'm selecting. Okay? So I know that when I paint with this brush, I'm going to get stripes like that. All right? Now, that'll work beautifully for what I'm painting right here. Okay? Just tap on a layer underneath it, start to draw. And now I've got my stripes on these pants, okay? See that? So that's a pretty interesting thing to be able to do, to be able to paint stripes right out of the gate. Easy peasy. All right, but check this out. If I zoom out and select that same little swatch right here, okay, then I'm selecting less of it. And look, now the stripes are a different size, okay, proportionate to my brush. So different areas of the canvas can be selected simply by zooming, and that's going to control how much color goes into your swatch. All righty, um, let's see. Kathleen says, I remember these jackets well. Yep, a lot of them going around there for a little while. Rob is here. What's up, Rob? Oh my gosh, Rob's here. Vat is here. Can you remove them once they're added? Uh, no, but they don't have to because there's no... Um, Fresco has no limit to the number of colors that get saved in your uh, recents. The multicolor swatches will eventually disappear, whatever the oldest one was that you had. It'll only remember the most recent six, but all the other colors in your document stay forever. So you don't have to remove them. They'll just go away over time, not to worry. All right, now, here's the thing. I just made some stripes right there. What if I was doing something where I wanted to paint different stripes, but I wanted to use the same sort of arrangement of hues and saturations and values, but I wanted to shift them in one direction or another, either the hue or the saturation or the value. One of the amazing things you can do with multicolor swatches, and I'll just come over here, and let's load up that original one we had there. So there it is, okay? One of the amazing things you can do is you can open up your color here, and we have this little section called HSB sliders, hue, saturation, and brightness. That's what HSB stands for. And look how simple this is. I just go this way, change the hue, I can change the saturation, change the brightness right there. Okay, so we'll go to a completely different arrangement there. And now we're still using that same brush and we're using those colors. Okay. And I'm still able to use the brush to paint stripes on this jacket here. Okay. So I created the swatch one time, and then I edited that arrangement of colors by using the HSB sliders. Can't get any simpler than that. This is a very powerful thing when you're using like really subtle multicolor swatches, and I'll show you what I mean uh, with that in just a moment. But look at this. Look how fun this is and how easy it is to me to paint these details. So I'm not having to go and select three separate colors each time and, and paint them one at a time. I just load my brush up with those multiple colors and then do the painting. Okay, and of course I'm going very fast here, not being very precise, but I hope that you are getting the idea. Okay. Um, wish you could add specific colors using hex values, says Leah. That is a really great request and I like it. I think that's a really great idea. I like it a lot. Um, and so, because I like it, I will pass that along 
to the team. And we may have had that request before, not sure, but uh, uh, let's see. Um, okay, now we will hide this for just a moment. Okay, goodbye and a goodbye. All right, now back to our, our little character here. Let me show you another thing that I like to do with multicolor swatches. Now this is the more subtle way of using them. Check it out. So I'm going to use a different brush for this. I'm gonna come into the painting category and I'm going to grab the Cezanne brush right here. Cezanne number one, okay? And for this, I'm going to use a different color. We're gonna use sort of this kind of teal kind of color here, okay? And I'm gonna put some color down. Now what you'll notice is that this brush takes advantage of color dynamics. See how it has subtle changes in hue, saturation, and value right there. So by using this brush, what I can do is very quickly create for myself a multicolor swatch that has subtle shifts in hue, saturation, and value. By putting that down on the canvas, holding down my touch modifier, and selecting a region like this, for example, okay? These are very subtle changes, but now if I add a brush like, for example, the wet bristle brush and paint with that, you will see those different colors coming through. Very nice. Okay, so what you're seeing here is a, a demonstration of how you could create brush strokes that feel very natural, that feel like they've got just a little bit of a shift in those values and a little bit of shift in the saturation um, in the color, and you can get some pretty beautiful effects with that. So by using a brush like this to then paint, uh, behind the the coat here. See that? You're getting those effects and you're also getting that bristle, the evidence of the bristle uh, work there coming through with a brush like this, okay? So look at that as I zoom in. You can see how subtle that is, all right? Very different kind of effect and combining this sort of thing with the right brushes is going to give you some pretty great results. Um, now you can imagine that something like this might might pay off if you're using the oils, for example. All right. So again, with this same swatch, um, let me open up our brightness here and push that brightness up. If I reduce that saturation a bit, we should see more of a shift in those colors. Remember, I can move this around like that. That's pretty nice right there. And let's grab an oil brush from the Live Oils, okay? And I'm gonna grab the round brush. I'm gonna ensure that the quality here is set to best and I can test that out right here. And right there you're seeing pretty nice result, look at that. See that? So now we're getting just those little shifts, those little subtle shifts in the color and this can go a long way in helping with the realism and also just the personality and the beauty of a painting that you're making digitally, but that you really want to emulate natural media and to have those kinds of effects. So you can easily, quickly make yourself a multicolor swatch using a brush that employs color dynamics. And I've done multiple um, demonstrations of color dynamics in past shows on Illustration Masterclass and on Brush Hour. If you're interested to know more about uh, color dynamics, you can look those up. You just search my name and color dynamics. You'll find, um, in fact, the, the first video on my personal YouTube page is all about four ways to use color dynamics in Photoshop. And um, those brushes, of course, will also work here in Fresco because that's what Fresco does. It supports Photoshop brushes beautifully. All right, but there you go. Nice to be able to do this. Look at that. Really nice effects that you're gonna get there. Okay, with those oils, very nice. So that's another thing I like to do is use these subtle shifts in the color, okay? Now, let's move on to some other magical things you can do. Because you can select any area of the canvas, okay, you can quickly make yourself some, you know, uh, custom brushes. For example, watch this. Let's go ahead, now for those of you who are like fans of digital lettering, for example, okay? And I know you've seen all these magical videos on TikTok and Instagram where people are doing this cool three-dimensional sort of lettering with various um, emoticons and whatnot. Um, you can make your own custom shape and do exactly the same thing. Watch this. I'll just go ahead and make sort of like this, sort of an X sort of a shape like this. 
Okay, loop. All right. And we will paint with that. I'll just use a uh, basic brush here. Good old hard round brush. Oops, make a new layer. There we go. Paint that in. Go a little bit darker, a little bit cooler. And I'll use the um, soft round brush. And I'm just going to come in here and darken that bottom bit a little bit. See that? Just like that. Darken that up. And then I'm going to add little highlights here at the top. And for that, I'll use the soft round opacity brush right there. Make that smaller. Come up here and just a bit of that right there. And then we'll go much, much lighter, make our brush a lot smaller, and just add little highlights there. All right. Nothing fancy, right? Just a cool shape. Let's deselect. Now, let's come over here and let's select that entire shape. See how I zoom out to get the whole shape? Zoom out a bit more and just make sure I've got that whole thing fitting inside my target. A couple ammo. All right, now that becomes my swatch, okay? So let's go back to that hard round brush, for example, and let's go ahead and look at our brush preview. Look at this, okay? pretty cool, right? So then I'm going to bump up the smoothing. It's nice and smooth and just say, hi. Look at that. Look at that. Pretty nifty, right? Now that is as simple as it gets right there. You want to make a really cool brush. Um, you just make a multicolor swatch that has a shape to it. And then you fiddle with your brush settings and look what you're able to do. Okay. Um, Let's see, any questions here? I'm just checking to make sure we have no questions. Um, will we be able to bring our capture patterns to use as fills and or brushes? I'm not sure, okay, I see, oh, 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 yes. We're, we're working on something called a pattern brush right now, Leah, where you can paint with patterns. So I hope that, I hope that answers your question. Um, all right, now remember, I can change the hue, saturation, and value here, right? So I can bump up that saturation, change the color, and now I've got a whole other swatch I can draw with like that. So that's how easy it is to make these 3D brushes and do all that cool lettering and all that other good stuff, all right? Pretty nifty, pretty nifty. All righty. Penny says, no questions, just mind exploding. Great, that's what we're here for, exploding minds. Um, don't forget, by the way, these work with the watercolors too. So if I come in here now with watercolor, right? How weird is this? Grab a watercolor brush with this swatch and do some pretty weird, cool effects, okay? This also means you could, of course, create custom shapes for your watercolors, which I think is really neat. So what I do is I just use uh, black and then I change the color with the HSB sliders. Um, for example, if I wanna make a watercolor brush that if I were to use like a spatter brush, go into our effects, so go to FX category right here and just grab spatter and uh, just go like that, right? I can select that area like this, for example. Now that's my swatch. I can come back to my watercolor brush and I've got a custom brush. Now I can just reduce the amount of water so it doesn't spread so far, okay? We'll go even lower. See that? So now I've got a watercolor brush with that shape. So that's a really cool way to make a custom watercolor brush. So even though there are like, what, five or six options in your watercolors, you could have hundreds of options, right? Just come in your HSB sliders and make different colors with that same brush. And now you've got a custom watercolor brush all set, ready to go. Pretty nifty. Okay. Now, last example I want to give you today uh, for this is making a brush that has some kind of a specific purpose for multicolor swatches. So check it out. Let's go ahead and paint ourselves a little vine. Okay, so I'll grab my ink again and just use black. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to draw, oops, I'm using the wrong brush here. Let's go to the Belgian comics. That would be fine. Just draw a little line and draw a little leaf like that okay and that's pretty simple right there multicolor swatch let's grab our touch modifier we're going to select this 
so that's right in the center on that stalk, okay? Like this, that'll work. And I'm gonna come over to my um, basic brushes right here. We're gonna go hard round variable. And let's go into our brush settings, okay? Under shape dynamics, we're gonna do a little uh, flip. Here we can increase the spacing and see what's happening right there. Okay, and we're gonna come to shape dynamics and we're gonna move it so that it follows a direction of our brush. Okay, oh, I just realized something. I gotta rotate this little bad boy right here. So let's do that. Transform and rotate. There we go, that's what I want. Ta-da, okay, beautiful. All right, and let's do a multicolor eyedropper selection of this. Okay, zoom out a little bit. There we go, right in the center, just like this on that stalk, that's what I want, okay? And now uh, back to that brush. So that's gonna be flipping it. Come into our settings, go to Shape Dynamics. And we're gonna go to Direction, very good. Come back here and let's go and make sure that we have the right spacing. And I think what I need to do is switch this swatch to the first one. I think I had it right on that one. There we go, excellent. Increase the spacing, make sure we go to shape dynamics, direction. All right, it looks like, I, it looks like I've, I've not drawn my swatch in the right direction. Maybe it was the other way now, so shame on me. I'm gonna figure this out, folks. Got a couple minutes left. Looks like I've got, oh, I've got no time left. Oh, time ban hammer. Oh my gosh. Sorry, folks. Well, listen, um, you can make yourself a practical brush and you can do whatever you like with it and paint like a vine or you could paint a chain link or anything like this. Okay. And it's going to work for you. I promise. Give it a go. Um, thanks for tuning in again for another episode. I know this is really short. They're only 30 minutes, but I hope you learned a lot today and check out my other multicolor eyedropper swatch shows. There's a little short video you can find on my personal channel about it, as well as on the Adobe channel. This is one of those features that you just can't miss, and um, I hope that you'll try it. It's amazing. Fresco's free. Go download it. Go play with it today and make something amazing. It's a professional art app that is, um, you know, it's as good as it gets. So stay tuned for more of these every two weeks, and I'll see you on Friday for my illustration masterclass. Take care, everybody. Ciao for now.